Open the Doors. Welcome to the Open the Doors for the first FRIP VT user meeting. So please uh, get yourself a cup of coffee and a pad, pen, whatever you need. And look, my co-presenter and my security blanket, Terry Brock, just walked into the room. Hello there, Patricia. How are you doing today? Well, I am doing superbly well. Naturally, I'm very excited. And what is even more exciting for me is not only my first FRIP VT user meeting, it is the fact that you are holding my hand just in case I need help. The hand is stretched across the plains here from yeah. Orlando to San Francisco as we're uh, starting to get started in about five minutes or so. So those that are yeah. walking in the room right now, so to speak, kind of like if it were a real meeting, they're able to come in and uh, you can encourage them to, oh, some good seats up front here over there. And over on the left side, there's some good seats. Of course, all the seats are good here on our webinar. <laughs> Good. And we would like, as people come in, to introduce themselves. Who's here and where are you from? And how do they do that, Patricia? Well, you tell me. that There is a chat box to the right of their screen. And at the bottom, isn't that right, there's a place. And you yes. can uh, either make it to everybody if they uncheck the ev hello everybody so there's at the bottom of their screen to everybody they can send a hello I'm here ask a question mm -hmm. if they want correct. it private they would uncheck that yeah, that's correct. They would uncheck that, and then we could send that. They could send a message privately uh, to you. Of course, you'll be doing your presentation, so it's kind of like trying to send a note to someone who's in the middle of speaking on the stage. It might not get the attention right away. It might be later. But what they can do is send notes, and then we have uh, Paul who is standing by, and he will be reading those, and we will read them also, and we will let you know of those if something is extraordinarily important. We can let you know a question is waiting, and you'll be alerted of that, Patricia. Yeah. So before we get started, and those that are joining, of course, we know they're just coming in. We want you to come in the room as if it were a, a real presentation right now in the in live presentation. Of course, this is real, but a live presentation with people in a, a regular convention meeting. You'd come in a little bit early, get a nice, comfortable seat, make sure you can see things well, and uh, begin from there. Yeah. And, and Gina Carr, your business uh, partner and co-author, will be reading the questions to me so that I can focus on what we're doing and Gina will ask us the questions. Yeah, she'll be joining us in just a little bit. And the best advice as anyone who's ever been to any of my seminars, I always say, what are your short, specific questions? So you, there's a lot more chance that Gina will pose the question to me if it's in one sentence and it's specific. Yes, that makes sense. I like it. Short, something about keep it simple and short. Yeah, mm -hmm. and specific. Right. Like, for example, if sometimes people said, uh, what, is, what is the best advice you can give about speaking? Well, in what area? At yeah. what level of your development are you? Focus me in the right track and, and the quality of the answer will be better. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And looking at the clock here, we have about two minutes and ten seconds or so before we officially start. So we're just warming up. Those of you that are joining us, this is uh, the FRIP VT program. You are in for a special time. I'm excited about this, Patricia. Well, Getting a chance. Yeah. This is our first time. And by the way, we have a person standing over your left shoulder there who is joining us. I'm sure you'll tell us about that gentleman that's there pointing at the bridge and pointing out with his right hand. Yes, that is Cavett Robert, who was the founder. It was really his idea to start the National Speakers Association. And the award that we give once a year is called the Cavett Award, which is given for people who have contributed to the industry and the association. And I was honored to receive that in 1996. In fact, on Saturday, Terry, I'm delivering a presentation for a local uh, Toastmaster event, a large event. We have 300 people, and that's all they can squeeze in the room. And 
uh, one of the photographs that I put within the PowerPoint presentation is, I don't know why you're, you're speaking. Do you want applause? You want to make more money or get a promotion? Or do you want to win an award? And I put that photograph up. And I always say, uh, my brother says, sister, if your friends tell you that you haven't changed, they are lying through their teeth. And that photograph is living proof that we've Excellent. Opened. Very good. We'll be starting in about 30 seconds. Uh, if you can see the clock on your screen, Patricia, you'll know when to do that. We'll be starting there at uh, 9 o'clock Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, coming up in uh, less than 30 seconds, about 20 seconds and counting. And we see Gina Carr has joined us, so we'll do that, and we'll look forward to hearing from you. And please feel free to tell us you are here, and we will be asking you some polling questions. And uh, we very much look forward to giving you information that will be helpful. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome to the FRIP VT First User Group. And we're calling this a tour around the campus. Our goal is, one, to make sure you know where every aspect of FRIP virtual training is and make sure you're taking advantage of it. Secondly, we will be introducing you to my co-presenter, Terry Brock. Terry and his business partner, Gina Carr, of course, are experts in technology. And just as you invested in FRIP virtual training and access to Patricia Fripp as your FRIP uh, virtual speech coach and in-person speech coach, when I want to learn something about technology, I go to Terry Brock and Gina Carr. And may I suggest that uh, when you want advice, it's best to actually pay for advice. Most of our friends are very willing to help us out a little, but if you need hand-holding and the best advice, go to the experts. Now, Melanie is here, and Melanie, of course, is my director of social media. And she is telling me, now, um, uh, Terry, I'm hearing some background noise. I am hearing some background noise also. Gina, would you, uh, I think, are you there? Maybe you could uh, mute your uh, speakers for a moment. We might be able to uh, eliminate that. Gina, I think you've frozen on there. We're I, having I, some problems. As she's using a one of those other computers, not a real computer like a good. Mac, Sorry but using that. one of those others. I think they call them Windows computers. Okay. <laughs> now, you will notice I, of course, use Windows, and, and any time that, that Terry can promote Macs, he does. Yeah. But Melanie <laughs> I, wants to make sure that I remind everyone, as they get advice, not only from this, from this event, also when they're going through their FRIP VT systems that they need to tweet the advice and put hashtag FRIP VT after. Now, uh, and we have Bob Wagner. Yes, Bob Wagner, I will be talking to him tomorrow. He is one of the partners uh, with in various projects with the American Payroll Association and Dave Chase is one of my uh, probably most favorite world champion edge members because he is uh, an expert and comes to so many of our events. As we are coming into the room and we are now here and we're on time, so first of all let me introduce you to Terry Brock. Terry is a pioneer in everything to do with technology. So Terry, what I would like you to do is just give us a snapshot of your entree into technology because what many of us think is new is old to you. So when did you start really presenting worldwide through technology? 
Well, I started doing it uh, many years ago, back in the actually the late 70s and then early 80s. I found as I finished my MBA program, I was doing a lot of management consulting and found it was a lot easier to put together the simple tasks of spreadsheets and cash flow statements and pro forma income statements, all those kind of things you do. And it was easier to do it with a computer. And I've been with it as it evolves through the years. And one of the things I had a chance to do recently was to work with Skype. And they asked me to come on board as their chief enterprise blogger. I helped them to do a lot of different things around the world with it. And now I've worked with uh, AT&T as the editor-in-chief of their blog. And now using Google Plus Hangouts, just on my own as a user. And I am amazed at what can be done. I want those of you that are watching today to listen to what uh, Patricia Fripp has to say. Brilliant ideas on how to sp present, what to do, how to say it, those kind of things. And also, watch between the lines. Notice what we're doing with Google Plus Hangouts. This is the tool, and think about how you can use that in what you're doing. You're in for a lot of wisdom today, and fortunately, this is being recorded for you and will be available later on YouTube. Those of you joining us live, we have the ability for you to send questions, and we're monitoring those right now. So that as, for instance, we see Bill uh, Fleischhauer, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Summers, New York. Good to have you here. And Dave is blushing. Is that from Blushing, New York, or is he just blushing? <laughs> He's blushing because I said something nice about him. Just well, and that's just fine. But you see, the advantage of this is we've got a chance to be really human. We can be human. We can be there. Like like TV, we're able to see it and listen to Patricia and the presentation she has, but also we can take it into a real world where we can send messages live and we watch you and you're watching us live. So Patricia, it's an honor to be with you today. Thank you. And Terry, you are one of the masters and one of the first, the pioneers in presenting at events that are actually happening in other countries. Is this the technology you use? Oh yeah, and we're using this a lot. I often I'm in Orlando, Florida right now. This is where my home is. I can present to people around the world, uh, Australia regularly, over in Europe. Matter of fact, another thing that's really nice, Patricia, I'm going to be speaking in Germany in just a few weeks. I'll be in Germany. While I'm in Germany, a program came up in California. Nine hours difference. Well, I'm just going to do the program in California from Germany while I'm there. Think about the possibilities. Those of us as speakers have often said, gee, I wish I could be in two places at once. Now you kind of can. And because of the technology, if you know how to use it and you do it right, you can do that and be able to serve more people, be able to have more fun, and make a lot more money too. You made the comment as people were coming in the room that Cavett is behind me, or at least the Cavett statue. And he was an innovator in his own way because he was the first person that we know of to sell cassettes at events. And because it was so new, he actually had to sell the cassette player with, with, the, with, the, with the cassettes. Yeah. And what happens is once in a while, Terry, and you mentioned this because, of course, we've been rehearsing just as we encourage everyone to rehearse their presentations. We have been practicing and rehearsing, getting ready for this, and sometimes things go wrong. Yeah, they do. It's a like normal thing in technology that uh, sometimes something will happen, but you want to make sure you do as much as you can beforehand and then prepare for that and be ready to roll with the punches when it happens. But Cabot did that as well. As you see in that statue that's just on our right, uh, on your left, Patricia, Cabot Robert was one of the founders of the uh, National Speakers Association. He used the technology of that day. He was not afraid to embrace it. At his time, it was the audio cassettes. And so he would say, here's a thing called an audio cassette. Set, and they would say, what am I going to do with that? Well, here's a player. You put it in like this, you push it down, you press this thing called a play button, and you can actually hear the sound. It was amazing. It was a breakthrough in that day. We smile about it today, just like they're going to be using things uh, 20 years, 30 years from now that we'll laugh and chuckle about. But that's okay. We keep using it. And I think the principle is to learn the new technology and how it can serve people better and embrace that, be willing to learn, you do better when you learn and you make yourself more available for the market and many more opportunities open up that way. One of the earlier IBM meetings when we were first emailing, etc., I always remember an IBM executive said, technology does not run an enterprise. Relationships do. 
Yes. So we are using this technology to develop relationships for our VT users. So now with that, Terry, why don't we have a tour around the campus? So I'm going to go to screen share and let's see the magic of technology. Let us see if I have done everything right. Looks so good. Wonderful. The Frip VT. And what I would like to bring attention, and these are this is the fine print at the bottom of any document. And what I would recommend everybody does the next time that they go into their FRIP VT or come in for the first time if they've just signed up, of course, the contact and support is at is at the bottom. Now, the contact, of course, is Harold and me. Then any question that we can't answer, we, of course, call Lightspeed because Frip VT is housed on a multi-million dollar platform. They, they, they have training programs that different people like Frip have in 90 different countries and great support. So anything I can't answer, we we go to VT, Lightspeed VT. Usually, what happens as of yesterday, there was uh, there was an upgrade with Google, and anytime there is an upgrade, very often there is a problem. You're going to clear uh, your cookies. And what I just cook here is you have to check your system requirements. If you are having a problem with getting your VT up to run the way it should, either there is something wrong, perhaps you're using the wrong browser. Internet Explorer, uh, Harold does not like it when I say it's not robust. Terry, what is the right word to say it doesn't have enough power to support all the flash. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have enough capability there. The ideal is because we're running with Google Plus Hangouts for this, then it really is good to use Chrome versus Internet Explorer, which is from Microsoft. Sometimes there's a little uh, con uh, con contest between the two, but using Google Chrome will help you enormously as you uh, use this. And some of our members are taking advantage of the fact that you can use this on your mobile devices. So again, this is a great way to look here about mobile devices. And you know this better than I do, Terry, uh, that certainly uh, when you have an iPad, in fact, let me... I'll leave this up, but just answer the question. When you have an iPad, that is a blank. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop sharing so you really can uh, can answer yeah. this in person. Yeah, I can do now perfectly. Yeah, good. So, so Terry, when you get an iPad, that comes with nothing. You have to download everything. You have to download a program with Flash. Is that right? Well, you'll actually download a program that will accommodate Flash. The iPad does not use Flash. It was a big contest, contest really between Steve Jobs and the folks at Adobe, and they were fighting all the time. Apple said, this is where great problems come. Adobe said, hey, we can fix it. Right now, we're actually moving to some other standards using what's called HTML5 and other technologies that make it work. So the key is what you want to do is focus on what works. And we know that Flash, which will work in many cases, will not work on your iPad. All right, good. Because I know with my Samsung phone, we can, you know, we can watch Frip VT. Yes. So now I'm going to go back to the system again, Terry. And all right, here we are. Here's Frip VT. All right, so as you looking at your VT system, you. If you just click around these panels up at the top, like most 
most websites you can find information various places if anyone and many many of my users have emailed me where do I get the handouts you talk about well guess what they're in the file vault anytime you click on a preview that is a video of me telling you what is in that area and this is where in the file vault you have the handouts and within here we have we have ebooks so beyond you can have each individual course handout you can have the complete workbook and we as i say we are adding ebooks there's the speaker's edge ebook I did add the article from Speaker Magazine about me because, after all, this is mine. And if I want to uh, show off my ego a little bit and have you see that, well, I'm going to do that. So then your report card. Now, for example, if you look at your report card, you can see all the courses and the chapters that you've taken. Are they complete? Now this of course is my system so they have been complete so many times and now going back to the main menu and actually Paul let's do a polling question seeing I was talking about the the file vault that makes sense can you poll and I'm going to stop sharing come back because Terry always says Patricia you have to change this up you, you you can't just watch at a screen or a PowerPoint too long. So I'm following instructions of Terry. Excellent. So can we can we send out the poll question, Paul? I are you you have you have you used the file vault? Yes or no? Yeah, this will be very good because one of the nice things you're doing right now, Patricia, is you're getting the interaction, being able to use polls, which is built into a Webinar Jam. That's an add-on that we're using on top of Google Plus Hangouts right now, and the polls are pretty exciting. So uh, we'll let Paul pull up the poll. There we are, Paul in the poll, and we'll make sure that we uh, get that on the screen. All right, and they will look into the chat box area for that poll, Terry? Uh, it should be on the screen. I'll see that come on there and right now we see when you click on that you'll see uh, those of you that are watching at the top of your screen you see chat and then you see polls click on that tab called oh, polls. I see. okay and click when on you do polls. that you'll see a question there uh -huh. called, uh, do, have you used the poll vault what we want you to do is to click yes or no this is rather binary you know it's like one or the other you either have the entire world is divided into those those two camps <laughs> you either have or you have it how's that <laughs> do I sound like a motivational speaker Patricia yes you do <laughs> have it would be proud all right so have you used the file vault yes or no and again look at your screen look at the top right and there is chat polls attendees so you're clicking on the polls okay and tell us while we're while they're voting on that tell us what the uh, vault is all about and the benefits of using that Patricia all right well I will go back so let me go to screen share and VT in the, the benefits of the file vault is this is where you have all your handouts for the different events the different chapters and courses and we have ebooks and special reports so there's a lot beyond that and let me remind you the report card when you select here you see exactly where you are in the system mm, now, nice. the, the next benefit that perhaps you're not aware of like any good book Terry or an, a magazine there are these chapters or there's these paragraphs within uh, an article that you think I want to read this again this is pertinent and we know within your different courses you are going to have favorite areas and there is a way you're going to want to find them and they are marked with a heart so let me show you 
how you how you would set up your favorites. And Patricia, if I could interrupt you there for a moment before we do that, we have yes. our results so far. Oh, can you see those results, Patricia? Well, let me. All right. So I should stop sharing, Terry. Yeah. For just a moment, we're just going to bounce there back real quick. We do have the results on the poll. All right. Hang on. Let me bring up. So here and we are. All right, so 33% have used the file vault, 67% no, which means perhaps you just haven't gone around the carousel and looked at the video that says this is what's here. Yeah, and I think that's part of the advantage of using what we've got right now because we can actually see you using the screen there. You share your screen. That means we're seeing what's on your computer. We go through and we can see the fault, the vault, and we go, ah, that's where it is. Now I can start using it. So those that aren't using that, that 67%, if that's a, if you fall into that 67% bracket, that means not anything bad. It's just, okay, you haven't had a chance yet. Now you have your chance. You've seen it. And Patricia, thank you for sharing that with us. Perfect. All right, Terry, let's go back and show everybody how you mark your favorites. So we're going to screen share. There we are. We see it on the screen now. Okay, so there's your favorites. Again, you click the preview button and a little me comes up telling you this is where your favorites are. So when we go to, let us go to the training center. Again, if you click the preview button, I tell you that's where all your training information is. As you know, if you have be, if you've been with Frip VT for a little while, we have 12 different courses which are made up of different chapters. So Terry, I'm going to let you select which one shall I click on? Okay. Getting started, finding content, connecting to your audience, speech structure, the importance of a good story, you have choices, options of openings, which techniques to customize your speech, leadership presentations, sales presentations, specificity, how to deliver a dynamic webinar or reporting to senior management. Pick any one. Wow, there's a lot there, and uh, as I'm looking at those of you that are reading this also might find that the type is a little bit small, and that's okay. You'll see it much larger when you go there yourself, so be sure and do that. Uh, but Patricia, one of my uh, favorites is over there on the left side right now. It's the second one down, now the third one down on the screen, the importance of a good story. Throughout history and throughout uh, international uh, adventures, we find that stories are very important. What do you have to say about that, both as a video lady on the screen and yourself live today? Well, I just shut up the video lady, but let's. So you can see here, I have a heart. This means this is one of my favorites, and I want to come back to it. So I'm going to take that off. So you see, as you look here, you, when you finish, you think, oh, that's so good. I want to be able to come back frequently and find it easily, and you would find it in my favorites. Now, Terry, if I click on this and watch a minute or so of this, they will be able to hear it live and clear. Yes, they should be able to stand by with your volume on your computer, then we can turn it up, but uh, let's go. We always like to take these uh, challenges. Those of you that are watching this, we like to take a little test here to see what it's like. And we've tested it before, but we want to make sure again to, so that you get the benefit of it. Go ahead, Patricia, and play that little video from that wonderful video lady that's there. Oh, hang on. Okay. Now, what we do there, you see, Terry, you, you can't watch it again until you answer the questions. So, oh, okay. what I'm going to do? All right, let's see. Uh, let's just get here. Yeah, just pick another one there and we'll see it there. There we go. What you may believe are two conflicting ideas the point of retelling stories you heard and the idea of only telling stories from your own experience. If you are retelling stories you heard in conversation and you make heroes of the people who shared their experience, then... Now, I am going to mute 
because of course what we want to do is just show you around you can have have perfect access to this you will notice with on the screen while I am speaking to you that we are making notes in the side asset we are visually or with the words we are reinforcing what you are hearing because we know that it is very difficult to keep today's audience totally engaged if all they are doing is listening or watching videos <coughs> and the, this is why Frit VT is interactive learn at your own speed in fact, it's probably better if you digest, try the principles you've learned before you go on. Quite up to you. Now, what you will also notice, there is a little tab here called Notes. So even though you have a handout in the file vault, you can take a note. Now, Melanie will tell you that what you need to do is perhaps... To Frit VT and that's yeah, using the hashtag. A, yes, a hashtag. So you can make a note to yourself. And speak to be remembered. remembered. And everybody knows that my is re remembered and repeated. So you see, you can keep your notes in here. However, if you want to tweet them, this would also be a great place. So there, we can close that. Now, also, Terry, we have some we have some Frit VT users in Greece, in India, in Dubai, in Denmark. So multiple countries, and although we speak business English, this system is put together not to trick you. It is to help you. And so I'm suggesting, especially to the companies who are buying this, that perhaps, although it's in English, if Hindi is your, is your first language, Again, the side asset is in English, and most of my clients tell me that they like listening to me because I speak clearly and concisely. I don't use highfalutin words. However, you can see the headlines, the notes, and the questions at the end of the chapter are in your language. Yeah, it's very important. And Patricia, if I can interrupt you for a moment, yeah. I see we have a comment from Stephanie. Uh, yes. I think, uh, you might want to comment and say hello to her, but uh, she said she loves the dual monitors, which allow me to follow on Fripp VT the instructions being provided in the webinar with a nice smiley face. Well, great. And, and when Harold, who is my technical support, said, oh, I'm setting you up two screens, to work on I had no idea that I'd be using it all the time it really is very helpful well thank you Stephanie and we, we thank you for showing us how easy it is to send me a message and that someone is actually reading it oh now, yeah we have quite a few uh, sending messages right now okay good well I'm just gonna go back to English hey, you speak English yes yeah, where did you know that? English fairly well fairly well fairly now, well We've come to because Terry, this is interactive, and so every it might be 90 seconds to perhaps even five minutes, you're listening to content. Then we ask you a question based on what you've just heard. And so, let's say, what time now? I am going to select the wrong answer. Now you notice when you have the wrong answer, I never actually tell you you're wrong. <laughs> what you don't get is the thumbs up. We just give you the right information and then we go on to the next level. As you can say, one thing about Lightspeed, that this is the, the multi-million dollar platform that this is on. They're very good at, at almost gamifying the learning so that younger 
uh, younger members are finding this is easy for them to learn. So let's go back to let's go back to the main menu and then I am going to come back and we are going to have another polling question. So hold on, let me get back. And the polling question this time, Paul, is have you marked any favorites? Let me come back. And those of you that are watching this, you'll notice on the top uh, the right po uh, portion of your screen, you have chat, polls, attendees. Click on the one called polls, and you will see that there. Click on polls, and you'll see the question, have you marked any favorites? Go ahead and put that in there. You'll be able to see uh, that, and you just click on the yes or no. This is one of those binary choices. It's either or. You know, The whole world is in one of those places <laughs> yet. But it'll be yes or no, and you go ahead and do that, and then Paul will work his magic. And while he's doing that. So Patricia, if you could, uh, while we're doing that, while they're voting, recap and tell us the importance of having favorites and some of the real benefits, say, uh, two or three months after you've gone through one, how favorites can benefit you. Yeah. The favorites are, if let's just say you have a presentation coming up and you were in the section on 17 ways to customize your presentation. Now, all the information is good, but Terry, you could hear, oh, wow, put the photographs of the, the clients into the PowerPoint. I'm going to have to remember that, so you mark that as the favorite. Now, you might find later on, in fact, one of the people who signed in, I don't know if he's live or going to listen later, Jim Medlock from the American Payroll Association. And one time I delivered a presentation at their pre-conference and I put within the PowerPoint all the photographs of every presenter. Ah. It's going to be. So again, that's a simple well, <laughs> let me let me clarify, I personally did not put the photographs in the PowerPoint because as I used to teach Terry when I taught time management, there is no point in doing well that which you shouldn't be doing at all. Somehow I see Peter Drucker with his thumbs up in the background going, yes, okay, indeed, that's good. the way to do it. Good. Well, we have an answer. So good. 27% have marked their favorites. Well, I think that's very good, which yes. meant you found it on your own. I love it. 73% not. Well, good. Then, fine. Now you at least know how to do it if you want to. That's right. I think we can interpret that no as a not yet. <laughs> not yet. Thank you. Very, very positive way of looking at it. So why now, Gina? You, of course, uh, are the co-author of Clout Matters, and you are going to ask or pose the questions that have been sent in. Yes. Well, uh, one of the questions is, um, how do you get VT to work on an iPad? Well, Terry, the and this might be from Jeff because if you can, if you can get a Flash on your device, then you can watch you can watch BT. The the questions like that I have sent to uh, Lightspeed to see if or when they will have that solution because it works on most devices if you have flash and I don't know if Benjamin is 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 tuned in or if he's gonna watch this as a replay but within one of my classes I had that question at one of my coaching camps and being young he just went in and googled how do you get this and and found the answer and that satisfied the VT user on their device mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. I would check with the, that's a technical question. I've got, a matter of fact, right here, I've got with me my iPad and use it a lot. I love the thing and working with it in many different ways. But uh, as far as uh, Lightspeed VT, which is a great system, uh, they have some unique uh, configuration. So that's a question that their tech support would be able to handle. I would say they probably will be moving toward uh, some other system also, like HTML or other tools that can use it, whatever it is. And so uh, check with them on that and they'll be able to uh, show you how to do it because 
many things now are moving toward the portable devices yes. of an uh, iPad or some of the uh, Android tablets that are available, as well, well as our smartphones. It does work on most. So what we're going to do, while Jean is asking the questions, I want you to go your iPad, Terry, and I want you to go to fripvt.com. Just you go and see what happens while Gina asks me the next question. Okay, I'm on and it. Again, your questions can be about VT, your questions can be about speaking in general. Whatever you like, we're here to serve you. And Gina, any other questions? Yes, and just to clarify, that one was uh, not from Jeff, that was from Dave. And um, how will you notify people that, that they can do that? Um, just send out an email letting them know that they can use light speed uh, on well, or off? Because most, most devices work. If there is one that doesn't, uh, it's good that send me the email and I'll okay. know specifically because I will, in, in one of the user meetings, we can give answers like that to everybody, but if someone specifically has it, send it to me. Okay, and great. Know how to find me. All yeah. right, and um, Bill has a question. He says he's giving a keynote that has to be worthy of educational credit. What tips do you what tips do you have for him or what tips could he find? Where could he go specifically within Fripp VT to find, you know, really good advice for that? Now this is to get cr educational credit. Well, he's putting together a keynote that's going to be worthy of educational credit worthy of it. So that doesn't mean because getting accreditation is something with which I can't answer. I know the American Payroll Association, for example, gives credits when you go through FRIP VT. Uh, I, well, I always recommend everybody starts with the speech structure, the skeleton under the flesh of your words. As you know, if you've heard me before, everything goes to how can you organize your remarks in a way that you can remember it and so can your audience. So I would always say go to the structure first and then also the options of openings. How do you immediately engage your audience and then of course great stories all of which you can find. And by the way, and what we will do next time we go back to, to VT is that we, I'll show you where you can search if you want information fast. Very good. And Patricia, if I can interrupt here, Ramon, yeah. I've gone over on my, and those can see, here we are, this is live, I mean, real time, yeah. right here on my iPad. Your video is there, and when I type it, listen to here, I'll have to turn the volume up a little bit. Patricia Fritz. Here at Fripp Virtual Training, you will benefit from a season... Obviously, the video is playing. So whatever they have done, the geniuses at uh, Lightspeed VT have worked it out. So they're, I'm guessing they might be using uh, HTML5. And by the way, those of you from Lightspeed VT, let me know. I'd love to know on that. Because uh, you'll catch this either on recording or live or whatever. But it is working. Bottom line for the question that came through, yes, it does work. We're seeing it work right now on an iPad. Working, this is an iPad 3 that I have, and it's working fine. So it's, it's probably what we have found a lot of the times is it, it's, not, it's not VT. It's, it's something to do with clear your cache. It, yeah. it has to do make sure you have the latest downloads, which means, for example, a couple of times ago, lots of Google uh, updates. I went to sign in, it wouldn't recognize me. As soon as I it cleared my cookies. Now, can you explain to the audience what clearing your cookies means, Terry, and how easy it is to do it? Well, where I grew up out in the country, it meant when Grandma made the cookie, we'd go on the counter, we'd just eat them all, which was something. But I think it's a little different here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, some, but clearing cookies, cookies are little uh, pieces of software that are put on your computer or your iPad or your device that says, hey, we went to this site. Now, it's important that you give approval of that. The benefits to you for having that are that then they recognize 
recognize you and they can say, oh, you like this, this, and this. Next time we'll put these in for you. Or you don't have to type in your name and password again. The problem could be, could also invade your privacy if you want. So I think it should be controlled by the user. And sometimes you need to clear all of that out because you could accumulate from many, many different sites over, think of how many sites you might visit over several months. Bunches of them. I think that's a technical term. Bunches of them. And with all those bunches in there, it clogs it up. As a matter of fact, the other day, just uh, yesterday, I had a little challenge with my MacBook Pro and I called Apple. They cleaned out a bunch of things that are in there. They went through one of these little secret, you know, hidden it way by in the back yeah. of places, found where it was, cleaned it out, and my computer working much better now. And it just got a little bit slow. They knew where to go and what to do. So clearing out your cookies. That means that you'll want to make sure that you've cleaned out some of those little identifiers and pointers that are on your computer. And uh, that's a good thing to do every so often. T check with the technical support department at your computer and whoever made your device so they can do that for you. And uh, if it uh, does mean clearing off the cookies that your grandmother made, enjoy the cookies. They're very good. Those chocolate chips were very good. I know Harold gave me a link of where to go and instructions to do for Google Chrome. So just, you know, Google, if you just Google, how do I clear my cookies for? It's not that complicated. Again, if you have a challenge, send it to me. I'll send it to Harold, and he'll find out for you. Very good. Good. Any other questions, Gina, about VT or speaking? No other questions right now, but you guys uh, who are watching, we have a lot of wonderful people out there. I see a number of attendees. Uh, just pop your questions into the chat, and if you if you place them privately and you don't want your name said, then please say, don't say my name. Uh, otherwise, we'll be saying your name. And um, so post them publicly or privately, either way. Yeah, and, and to put the chat in there, make sure you click on that little tab at the top that says chat. Uh, if you look on the right side of your screen under detached sidebar, you'll see chat, polls, attendees, etc. Click on chat, and when you do that, you'll see the chats that everyone has. All right. And uh, Terry, when people poll, this is anonymous, isn't it? We don't know who's saying yes or no. That is correct. That's a very important consideration because we might not want everyone to know A, B, or C. Of course, the questions you've asked so far, they're not really that super private. But think about the ramifications of this. For those of you that are going to use this yourself and use something like uh, Google Plus Hangouts with Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam it require, is required in order to use the polling. And so when you do that, you might say, well, which, where should we move the company? A new office. Should it be city A, B, C, or D? And there might be a lot of contention on that. And you don't want everyone to know that you're voting for city C, whatever that is. Well, it is anonymous. All we see is a collection of the aggregate numbers and the percentages. We do not know how many people, and we certainly don't know the, uh, who said specifically what. Now, we, we, Paul, can you set up the next polling question is because what we want to do is make sure that when you invest in FRIP virtual training, not only do you have access for the information 24-7, learn at your own speed where you can test, track, and monitor what you are doing and if you if you run a team and I'm going to show you before we leave how I can see how you are doing so don't tell me oh Fripp I've been through the first six courses because I can see if you are which is important if you're a manager so the next polling question though is would it be of benefit to you if we have, say, monthly FRIP VT user meetings where you can ask me speaking questions. So again, it's yes or no. Would this be of value to you? And to get that, of course, click again on the tab called Polls at the top of your screen. Click on that, and you should see in a moment uh, Polls appearing. I don't see that yet on mine, but uh, we should have that in just a little bit. And by the way, in the middle, min, uh, meantime, I got a message uh, from Paul who said that uh, he's using Puff and Flash browser, which is free, and it works on his iPad works on the iPad and uh, it seems to be working just fine. So there we go. And we have our poll up there, thanks to Paul in the background, wondering, w running those polls beautifully. Would it be a benefit to you to have monthly FRIP VT user meetings? This is something we're debating right now and of course you just click a yes or a no and then a, a vote and you will be able to see your vote tallied with the others or at least the compilation I should say of all of that. What would be the benefits of that uh, we're doing that Patricia while they're voting? Well certainly uh, I am not available to 
everybody in the world. Let's put it this way. So obviously the fact that you, <laughs> even when they got money, I'm not available because there is only so much time and we have to prioritize where we're going. And my major priority is FRIP virtual training, building a community, building this into a profitable, a su supportive environment. And so obviously those people who can ask me advice, in other words, it's almost like I'm answering your email faster, I'm returning your phone call, we can do it this way. And so as long, and it looks like 100% of the people, yay! <laughs> I'm thinking yay. that's a real strong indication, Patricia, you know, okay, using deductive now, logic here, and uh, <laughs> I'm thinking 100% is good. All right. Now, second polling question, similar in the same vein, is would you, on some of these calls, like me to interview some of my friends who are speaking experts. Oh, tell us some of the friends that you have who are speaking experts, if you don't mind uh, twisting your arm a little bit here. I know you uh, know some people, for instance, we're in your uh, speaker's round table. Who are some of those people that uh, others might know and other people around the world that you know? Well, let's, as you brought up speaker's round table, because I was just there for our user group. Well, as of course, I, I am very lucky that we have you, an expert on technology, while we are learning to perfect this new technology. So obviously, and I am sure if they wanted more interviews specifically with you, we could set that up. Yes. Looking at my speakers round table, uh, we have uh, Don Hudson, who's an expert in sales and negotiation. We we have uh, Ford Sakes, also uh, my webmaster, an expert in marketing and technology. Then when we look at speaker skills, Jim Cathcart. And now we have some World Champion Edge members because we launched Frit VT. So you might be hearing something that is not announced yet. So do you think I should tell my VT users a secret, Terry? Well, if I reach through the screen here from Orlando all the way over there to San Francisco and twist your arm just a little bit, could we get you to tell us something? Well, I'm talking, just thinking of Jim Cathcart, who is, of course, marvelous on the platform and a great person to interview to give advice. Hmm. Uh, he, at the National Speakers Association convention, we streamed virtually. So those people who couldn't attend could watch segments of Frip VT, uh, segments of NSA virtually, and Jim Cathcart was the host. So uh, we we are talking the powers that be at World Champions Edge. We are talking about making some virtual seats available for Lady in the Champs next year. Nice, now, certainly. Good. If you're in America, you would want to come. And uh, we had people from 16 different countries at Lady and the Champs. However, we understand, although one person might not come to Dubai, we have uh, 17 VT users in Dubai. Perhaps one would like to come, because I know one is booked to come. Uh, perhaps others would like to see segments of that. So uh, we're talking about that. And Jim Cathcart, who is a great speaker, he is an expert in that. All right, well, Terry, 100% of the time, 100% of the audience would like me to interview experts. Good. There and you I go. Have... I think that's important. All right, good. Perfect. So let's go back to Frit VT one more time, and then we come back to questions. So you have my commitment that we will have ongoing VT users, uh, that we can answer your questions about the system, I can answer your specific questions, and I will interview. And, and perhaps the next question we're going to ask uh, Paul, this wasn't designed so you can write it, uh, we'll ask after I come out of the VT demo, uh, will be, are you enjoying this format? Does this work for you where it's a conversation, a demo, and, and this technology?
So you can set that up. Now I'm going to go back to far screen. And you might say, Fritt, why every time do you say I'm going to screen, I'm going to share my screen? It's because I am learning this and I want Terry to know I'm going through what he taught me in you're case he has it. to say, Fritt, uh, you need to do this. I'm not seeing your screen. And you're doing very well at it. <laughs> Perfect. I have a, a good teacher. So again, let's review. You have the carousels here. Very simple. Your favorites. Just go around here. Now you can also find your notes, your favorites, your file vault, and let's look at your tattletale reports. What now, is a tattletale report? Well, this is a graph of my usage. Now you see this is for me. So this is of course how many times I've been in the system in the last seven days. Oh really six days. This is the first one. So you see I can this is your tattletale. So you see as a graph what's passed what's failed. Now you might say, Fritt, why do you fail your own questions? Well you understand I test everything both ways. So, uh, and, and for me I can actually see what the right answer is. Uh, but So that's why we, we look various ways. Now what I'm going to show you, now let me say, well I'm going to do this with, I'm going to show you, let's see, so we're going to go back to the main menu All right, so you see, you can find how to navigate around here. You can also find how to navigate around here. Now, what you will not see in your VT is the quick links on this side because you see, I am a super user. Now, when I click on my super user and search all locations, I'm going to generate a report, and you don't have to worry about this, but then I am going to look at my FRIP. So this is my FRIP members. So you see, when I come down here, I can manage my users. So for example, from here, I can click on any of you and see how you're doing. I can see your tattletale reports. Though so this is why when you say, oh, I've been through six chapters, come on, I can see you haven't because I've got the graph and, of course, I have your report card. Now, this is important for those of you who manage teams or for company accounts. And I know we have a couple of people here who want to introduce this to their community. So they are going to partner and co-brand this with us. And so what we can do, of course, this is always going to look like Frit virtual training. However, we can brand it with your logo. We can have a message from uh, the company or the, the partner who's introducing it to their communities. And through the light pad, which we haven't got into, but if a company has 100 users, they can actually send messages through this. So every time someone tunes in, they have a message from their boss. So for example, what a, a super user or a manager can do, can manage their teams, can manage their users, and uh, now the watchdogs, the watchdogs, it, there's nothing in it for me, it, for my system. However, for example, with some companies, and perhaps it might be their, their HR department wants to know when they have employees and they are, they're asking, hang on, I'm coming back into the Hangouts, Terry. Uh, so for example, there might be questions in uh, like is it is acceptable to bring a handgun to work mm. now if someone answers yes that can be triggered to go to the human resource department with a message you need to have somebody go talk to fred cuz he answered this question within our training system all right good so uh, the 
Paul anticipates my need. Don't Gina, don't you like men who anticipate your every need? Paul has just put up a, a polling question. Are you enjoying this format for VT user meetings? So again, go to the polls. It's yes or no. You're either enjoying it or you're not. Very good. Yes, I think that's good to get this feedback. And those of you that are watching this, as you're doing it, I want you to, again, watch between the lines. Think about this and how you can use this type of technology for your own communication. Because it is breakthrough. This is cutting edge. In a way, Patricia, it's almost like you're introducing people in 1982 to a thing called a personal computer. Yeah. And people say, think about how you could use this to do your own word processing, your own spreadsheets, your own database, the things that we were doing back then. And now, today, we're looking, looking at Google Plus Hangouts, and you have added the extra called Webinar Jam on top of that that gives you the ability to do these polls, that gives you the ability to do it. And it looks like we have some results there, Patricia, on our poll. Surprisingly, well, what is it? A hundred percent of people are saying they're enjoying this format. So Excellent. that's great. Wonderful. And I think we're on to something there. Perfect. Well, uh, let's ask another polling question, uh, Paul. Is, is monthly, and you understand depending on different, uh, different schedules, and, and we will do them different times of the day because we have people in other countries that at least when you register you can always watch the replay even if you don't attend but if you can ask the question would monthly approximately every month work for you and then Gina are there any questions uh, in fact uh, are there any questions that you can see now I can see uh, okay, I can, are there any questions, Gina, that are coming in? I'm looking here, but I'd oh, rather you read them to me. Yes, there's one from Bill, uh, and there are a lot of Bills in the audience today. Uh, Bill says, can you, can you give an example of weaving stories into technical information? Oh, right. well, good. Well, any time you introduce an idea, and I'm going to get Terry to answer this as well because he, all his presentations are somehow about technology. Uh, well, let's look at the FRIP speech model in the skeleton under the FRIP of your words. And you know, whenever you introduce an idea, you have to give perhaps an explanation of what that means then you need an example of that and then perhaps the application for this audience then if you go to the the chapter on specificity bills credibility which is the only course that only has one chapter specificity bills credibility and we introduce a couple of very important ideas one of them is fat and skinny words or speaking to the level of the audience so again you're introducing an idea then perhaps you have the you might have the technical engineers that are going to make this work you are going to have uh, perhaps the users who are going to use this new technology and then you might have the chief information officer and and his team or her team because we know women understand technology as well as men as Gina is there backing us up to prove this so when you introduce an idea if you think fat fat information is high level of abstraction. It's not very specific. Skinny is absolutely nitty bitty. This is engineering language to engineers. So when you introduce your talking point and you give and you give an explanation, you have to start big. You have to give an overview of what this is going to do for the company. You might then give a an example of how the everyday user is going to use it and then you're going to get skinny and say for our heroes in the IT department this is what we need you to do etc so 
when you have multiple makeups of an audience. In fact, Bob Wagner is here. We're from the American Payroll Association. Within that audience, you have payroll managers, you have people who are with the HR department, and you also have some technical individuals. So when you present an information, it's important for each area of an audience to understand, I know that you are there. So perhaps not every talking point you're going to include them. It's very good to say, now how this is going to affect you in payroll is this. Now in the HR department, be sure that you do it this way. And again, our technical heroes are making this work. So is that a good enough explanation? And you know it's the skeleton and the flesh of your words and specificity builds credibility will tell you how to find it. Yeah. Did did you say you wanted Terry to comment on that as well? Yes. Yes, I would, Terry. Now repeat the question, Terry or Gina, for, for Terry to be on focus because you two are the experts on technology. Can you give an example of weaving stories into technical information? Yes, I do that all the time in the presentations I'm making. Uh, one of the big things I talk about is I say often when we're looking at technology, we're feeling swamped. We're thinking, oh, I can't do this because it's too difficult. And one of my signature stories that I use is from a portion of The Matrix, the movie. You remember there was a time when they were fighting the bad guys and it looks like they weren't going to make it and they had a helicopter that she needed to fly. He looks over at her and says, can you fly that? She looked back and said those immortal words, not yet. And not yet is, I think, very encouraging. And so I talk about that in my programs, and it often becomes the signature theme that you'll hear people say throughout the convention. People saying, well, can I do this? Not yet. Which means you're not, tell you're not lying, saying, yes, I can do it. Well, no, you can't. You're not trying to some have some fake positive thinking, pumping fists in the air. Yes, I can do it. When your brain's going to tell you, no, you can't. But if you say not yet, what that means is you're willing to pay the price to go back and put in the time money and energy to make it happen, to be able to do what's necessary, hire the coaches, read the books, take the courses, enroll in a local community college, whatever is necessary in order to get it done. And I think that's important. I talk about that with technology. It works with many things, but I think the stories are so important that uh, as we look at where we are, what we can do, stories really make it work. And Patricia, I noticed uh, on the time here that we're about uh, ready to uh, wind down. I have another commitment to get to, but uh, I was going uh, well, to turn over to you to wrap up. I can any other still talk for a few more minutes, Paul, and I can keep you. But can everyone uh, please in your office uh, just let's give Terry and let's give Gina uh, some applause. Thank you very much. And if anybody needs any help with technology, Terry and Gina. Uh, Terry at terrybrock.com uh, certainly are, are the experts. They are very good at holding your hand, and trust me, they are very patient. I said to Terry and Gina, you are really going to earn your money with me. It's all right. We are honored to do it. And Patricia, really, this is great. Think about it. We've just done this thing, and before I run, as we look at it right now, I know we're leaving it in the able hands of Paul and Gina will be here, being able to oh, help good. you on that, being able to do it. And we've gone through no technical glitches. Everything's working fine because we've done our homework beforehand. There's ways to do this. Those that have worked with technology go, oh, I tried it and it didn't work. Wait a minute. There's things that you need to do. It's like you wouldn't try to fly a plane the first time on your own. Not smart. They have ways to do it. You go through a thing called ground school, and then you go through uh, training over and over with a pilot sitting next to you. And then eventually, after enough times, you can do it on your own. But it takes a little while to do that, and that's what I encourage everyone to do it. So keep thinking, yes, I need to do the right things in the right way. And if, you, if somebody says, well, can you do a Google Plus Hangout, you might say, not yet, Not yet. <laughs> but be able to do it. Patricia, thanks for all your help. It's great to be with you, and we will be in touch. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm glad Gina's still here. And I would like to s welcome our newest VT user, Mohan from India. And I just quickly sent him a link uh, this morning, thinking hopefully he got it to sign up, and he's actually live with us. So, uh, Gina, are there any more questions about speaking? Yes, there there are a few questions here. Let's see. So. And, and a few comments, let me just say, um, S. 
Sala Veyas uh, said that uh, wonderful client support. She really appreciates it. And Bill said that he appreciated the email where you called him out for subscribing but not using FripVT. <laughs> Well, big brother and big sister, now you know exactly how I know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, great. Let's see, Melanie asks, uh, can a non frip VT user join one of the future events to learn more about this? Well, that's a good question, and uh, the user meetings, Melanie, will be just for users. That's very important. I did invite a couple of people who are in, uh, and, and one of our good friends, uh, Libby, is, is doing a review for her company to make recommendations. So those people we interview from the American Payroll Association, we have their trainers can take advantage of this. And so even if they haven't signed up yet, I did invite them. Uh, but for the most part, these will not be for outside people. However, we will be delivering some introductory webinars that VT users can certainly attend as well and they can certainly invite their friends. So they will be, they will be separate from the user meetings. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Any more? Okay, yes. Let's see. Um, Mohan says, sometimes when a question pops up and he answers, the system hangs and he needs to go back to the start of the video. That is up. Uh, thank you for asking. It is to do with the browser. You check your, so one, check your system. And let me go back and show you again in case you came in late. Let me. But it, that is nine. Well, I would hang on. Let me. Uh, VT system. So, Mohan, what I need you to do is go down to the system requirements at the bottom and click on that and see what your health is. See, you want all these to go past. Now, when I do this on my laptop, it will it gives me one saying uh, that uh, my screen isn't big enough. I can still see it, but it's not ideal. So it's 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 that is partly. Secondly, again, it's clear your cookies or, or your cache, which shouldn't be a problem as you've just come in, and it also is to do with the browser. Now, because you're in another country, I don't know if, hang on, let me come back to you. I don't know if, if you are signing in from your company system that I know with Dubai we had some issues that our our VT users work in a company that is very cautious about what video you can take on. So one, check the system requirements. Two, uh, then uh, make sure you're in Google Chrome or Firefox. And then um, if you still have any issues, uh, let me know. And what happens, a couple of people have uh, um, you have sent screen shares of what they're looking at and Lightspeed has said, well, one person, they said, well, it's malware on your computer. It, it, one should never say it's never VT. However, it is, let me put it, it's either human error or there's something with the computer or the system. Just as Dave said, I can't get VT on my iPad, but but Paul and Terry did. So it's something that isn't downloaded or something on, on maybe it's an older iPad. Not sure. But if you give me the specific model number, I'll, I'll ask VT. All right, Gina. Okay. Uh, one person had asked about the cameras we're using and uh, saying the clarity is really excellent. I know Terry and I are using the Logitech C920. Is that what you're using, Patricia, or are you using something different? I'm using a Logitech, and I believe that's it. However, may I give them a secret? Sure. 
one, I have lights coming forward on me, I have lights above me, and you notice I, I have a set behind me. If I took that beautiful photograph that Harold, my assistant, took of the Golden Gate Bridge, um, I would have shelves and the normal office. So one, as with a presentation, everything we do, and this is tweetable, hashtag FRIPVT, Melanie, I'm following instructions, everything we do in our presentations adds to or distracts from our message. And that is exactly the same with a virtual presentation. So what we are, our goal is to make it intimate. This is a conversation. This is not a tight scripted speech. Not necessarily everything is perfect the way we want it to be as close to clear and concise with a presentation. You still do whatever you can within your control if that answers that question. Gina, uh, do you have any advice? You've been doing these a lot longer than I have. Well, like the cameras are important. The, the sound is actually more important than the camera uh, for most people. People will continue to listen as long as they can hear. Uh, so, yeah, so external microphone, I have mine hidden underneath here as well. So <laughs> these are little tricks that you, you don't see because we don't have a microphone clipped on. We have uh, just a stationary microphone, and Terry had the same thing, so that gives really good sound. So, yes, a great microphone, a great um, and great uh, camera is important. In fact, if it's okay with you, I'll pop a, a link to the camera that we're using into the chat. Perfect. And I have popped, uh, I have popped a few tweets into the chat, so people can just copy those and tweet them easily with your hashtag and your Twitter handle. So uh, those. Those are quite good. Those are pretty much the um, questions that we're having right now. Uh, staging, you're right, is really important. And um, I, I had a screen that I used to use, but now that I switched cameras, it's wider. So I've got to get a new background. All right, good. Well, we really appreciate that many of you, most of you are, are live and some of our other friends will be watching the replay. You of course will have the replay button. We also appreciate that you are you are here live when Gina and Terry are teaching me to make the most of this technology. Uh, Paul is in the background to make sure that he's the administrator because it is very difficult to be reading questions, working out how do you go from, from the screen to, to the, the website, and, and it's too difficult to focus on too many elements. Uh, and, and so just as you get the results by team effort, and if you're familiar with my content, you know, uh, I frequently say it is very difficult to be creative in isolation. It is also difficult to master technology in isolation. And we certainly hope that you realize that our intention is to keep you involved with FRIP virtual training and we want to make it as valuable as possible and we will uh, watch your email and uh, we'll let you know when the next meeting is. I like hearing from you. I expect to have multiple emails so give me a couple of days to catch up because I actually do have other meetings and other speeches to give. So with that before my walk away line Gina on behalf of you and Terry Brock would you like to give some final advice about virtual meetings or your world of technology or even a tip from Clout Matters? <laughs> well thank you. Uh I did put a link to uh, Terry Brock's resource page where he has cameras and microphones and you know lots of things that would be great resources for doing this sort of thing. So that's terrybrock.com slash resources. And um, a you know a clout raising tip is basically the way that I have posted your those tweets and I said, you know, tweet this for copy and paste. Um, it's it's good for your clout score to include your user handle in addition to your hashtag. 
Hashtags uh -huh. really important. Also use uh, include your user Twitter name because uh, that's how you get cloud points. And perhaps if our perhaps if our audience wanted to have an interview on Clyde Matters, perhaps you would be available, Gina. I'd love to. It's a great service for helping you measure how you're doing on social media and other people are measuring you and you want to measure yourself. So it's um, it's kind of like a credit score for your internet interactions and I'd be happy to. Thank you. Good. Fripp VT users, thank you very much for the investment in your future and mine. <laughs> we hope that this user group has encouraged you to maximize the investment you've already made. You don't have to go into Fripp VT every day, although if you think one chapter of one course does not take very long, especially Dave, when you work out how to do it on your iPad or your phone. So with that, this is Patricia Fripp signing off, as I often say in presentations, frequently reinforce ideas that are productive and profitable. Thank you. <laughs>